How can you begin with the end in mind? That is, manifest your dreams, your goals, by living in the end. Today, we have the privilege of covering the subject, live in the end. And not only today, I actually am going to break this into a series of four discussions with you. Hello, my name is Robert Mead, and I'm your host and your imagination coach. And over the next few weeks, we are going to be going deep. We're going to be taking a deep dive. Why is that important for you? Because understanding this concept, beginning with the end in mind and learning to live from your imagined state, from your desire, is key to your success. Stay with me. This is going to be not only informative, but I'm going to be giving you specific methods over the next few weeks of how you can actually implement this in your life, beginning today with begin with the end in mind and the key subject of live in the end. Do you have a major goal you want to accomplish? Do you have a desire to become, to be, to do more than you have before? Have you found actually using the law of attraction and the law of assumption that Neville Goddard teaches difficult? Perhaps you've had some successes, but I'll tell you, this particular subject for me and my students has really been a key subject of how to live in the end. We're going to start from the very beginning of that subject with the subject of begin with the end in mind. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be covering a series of topics that are related. Using your imagination. Another is believe it in. And finally, mission accomplished. By the end of this series, you're not only going to be equipped to implement the uh, amazing truths, but along the way, I'm going to be giving you 24 key methods, actual methods and techniques. And I'm going to explain carefully and explicitly how you can actually begin to use them. And so you'll never have to ask how or why or what to do, because you will know. And that's why it's important that you stay with me to the end of this video and follow me closely in this series as it unfolds over the next few weeks. All great athletes have used this method forever. You can imagine a basketball player, he sees the ball going through the hoop before it happens. Larry Bird, Famous basketball player used to actually tell his opponents exactly what he was going to do, and then he did it. Tiger Woods would see the ball landing by the pin. Likewise with Jack Nicklaus in golf and all great golfers. An athlete who is going to do a high jump sees himself clearing that jump before he ever starts to run. This is exactly the idea of reaching your target in your mind, in your imagination before you start. Yes, beginning with the end in mind, just like you see on the picture here of this target. That dart is in the center of the target and that skilled practitioner has aimed carefully and has seen that dart going exactly where he wants to place it. In this case, right in the heart in the center of the target. So beginning with the end in mind is also what other great athletes and actors and those who have accomplished the unbelievable, what seemingly is an achievement that has perhaps never even been done before by imagining that it's already done and learning how to put themselves within by living from it. And we're going to talk about that today also. So begin with the end in mind when it comes to imagining your goals, your target, your aim as already yours. As Neville said in this quote, so here I say, dwell in the end. The end is where I begin. And this is from Neville Goddard and this very lecture 
live in the end. Neville said, the end is where I begin. And so the end is your beginning, and you want to start right there, as have all who have accomplished great things in their lives. Okay, so it's time to get serious, and I really would invite you to pause this video just for a moment. Go grab a notepad, pen and paper, and you should be having a notepad anyway, because this is information that will help you clarify what needs to be clarified first, and that is, what is your target? What is your goal? How clear is it and how specific is it? So let's begin there. Let's consider these important questions and follow along as we do. Grab that notepad, come back and let's go. So let's begin. What do you truly desire? What would you love to be, have, do or become? What would that end result look like for you? You must imagine that life first. You must experience it as yours now. So ask yourself this question, what do I want? Is it perhaps a dream house, a loving marriage or relationship, a wonderful career or job, a higher income, Maybe it's ideal health and fitness. Perhaps it's simply to be a more confident, power, powerful, loving, kind, personal self-concept. You want to develop yourself, perhaps, just to become a stronger, better person. And you'd like to know exactly how to do that. But before we can do that, you have to see it. What is it exactly that you do want? What is it that you might like to be? What would you like to have? What would you like to do? What would you like to become? Take a few minutes right now and begin to write out exactly what you would like. Put aside all doubt, all fear, and just let your pen flow and write down Start to write down, use your imagination and go into your heart. What would you really want to see in your life? If you were actually able to experience one-on-one -on -one personal coaching with me, one of the very first things I have my clients do, and I'll ask you to do the same thing, is to write out, it might even be several pages, of what you would like to see happen in your life. And then narrow it down to very specific goals, perhaps one through 10, one through five, or as we see above me here, one through three. Be specific, write out your goals. Here are some suggestions for you to consider that may help you in doing that. Notice these suggestions. What are your goals for health? Perhaps weight loss, fitness, and exercise. What are your goals for wealth? Do you have a certain career or income level or a prosperous specific type of business that you would like to be successful at? What are your goals for a more abundant life? What would that look like? What would that feel like? Will you travel? Will you move even to a foreign country the way I have been doing the last four years of my life, which I imagined all of it first? What is it that you would have and be that would represent an abundant life for you, what would that look like? Again, it may be a new home. It may be a better relationship, maybe a better relationship within the one that you are currently involved in or a fresh new relationship. Write it out specifically what you would like. And then I would take each one of those and even get more specific. With your health, is there a specific weight or look that you would like to have accomplished? 
with wealth again we talk about prosperity but not generally I want to be rich but what type of income would you like to have what type of money would you like to have in the bank what would that amount be be specific okay again the more specific you are the more you're sending a clear message to your subconscious and we'll get into that more so as we go along so what would that experience each of these experiences in these different areas of your life what would they look like what would they feel like you may even ask who might be there for example if it's a new home would there be a partner with you there would there be children would there be family would it be in the mountains would it be on a beach would it be in a metropolis or city that's your choice but the more clear you can make your goals the better so do your very best to be specific and you can always update and change these as things begin to become more clear for you in the coming days but write out your goals very specifically you know when you really get into this and be, begin to have the mindset of already having what you desire picturing yourself within it having it being it as already there as already yours it creates an attitude it creates what Neville calls an expectant mood when you begin with the end in mind you'll have an expectant mood that is you'll expect it to happen and it will put you in the mood of what it would be like to already have it Neville said the following from one of his lectures I discovered that my expectant mood worked as a magnet to unite me with the greater me with the greater me now this is something that again when you really get into and practice living imaginatively and understand that there is a power in each of us connected to whatever you choose to call it I choose to call it God some say the universe a universal power the quantum field the fourth dimension powers beyond ourself right the Neville refers to it in this case as the greater me it's a power beyond us yet within us you unite with that greater self within because you're sending the message that I have this it's mine and you're in the mood and spirit and attitude of having it already it's an expectant mood it's a marvelous mood now notice that sometimes you'll hear those in this world suggest that we be cautious about expectation it could be a well-meaning family member a friend who knows you and they say come on do you really think that's going to happen in fact it's been said expect nothing and you'll never be disappointed how negative and you want to stay away from that type of speech and thought whether it's from others or from within yourself you have every right to have your goals met to achieve your goals and so expectation is a normal thing that comes with that when you go on an interview to get a job if you don't expect them to choose you if you don't already visualize and imagine that you've got that job and that they've chosen you out of however many applicants you've already lost you must expect it to get it and so being in a mood of expectation or having the attitude of expecting it is really key so when you live in the end you're working with the greater one within and I'm going to ask you regardless of your previous beliefs to buy into that because there are powers beyond us 
that will work with us to achieve our goals if we create that expectation and that expectant mood. Beginning with the end in mind, Neville Goddard also referred to several times throughout his works that this was at the center of our being, at the very center. This feeling of expectation, this mood of having needs to be at the very center of any manifesting method. So my expectant mood, what is your mood at your center? Years ago, I developed this uh, sequence that has worked for me like a charm throughout my life. And that is that expectation leads to anticipation. And anticipation leads to realization of actually physically or actually obtaining and reaching a goal and seeing it in your world, experiencing it and having it in your life, realizing it. Expectation leads to anticipation and anticipation leads to realization. You may want to write that down. It works so well. It's worked in my life in so many ways. If we have more time here, I'd give you some examples, and I will be giving you some examples in the future. Neville talked again about this being at the very center of us. He says, I discovered that my expected mood worked as a magnet to unite me with this greater me the center through which all threads of the universe are drawn. Wow, so deep, but so very true because we are connected from within to everything without. The experiences we have on the outside, the physical experiences and occurrences in our life spring from the center of our self-concept and our beliefs at the heart of things. And so this expectant mood really needs to become the center of your belief system and it becomes so powerful. Let's further clarify why mood and attitude are so very, very important in producing results having that mood and feeling you would have if you were to accomplish your goal, to have that mood first before you have the goal helps bring it into reality. Okay, think this through. It's actually scientific. As Neville states here, the mood and attitude creates your results. Effects follow what? Causes. So think this through. It's based on chapter one of the book, Prayer, the Art of Believing, on the subject of the law of reversibility. In part, Neville states there, electricity can be produced by magnetism. And therefore, magnetism can produce electricity. Likewise, if electricity and friction causes heat and motion. Heat and emotion applied to a mechanism, right, can produce electricity. Cause and effect and even effect bringing about and affecting the cause. This is why Neville emphasizes that results follow. Results follow. They don't proceed. Results follow what? They follow having the mood and spirit of expectancy first. 
seeing it and believing it and imagining it true first. As Neville states here, if you knew how it would feel, then inversely, you would know what state you could realize were you to awaken in yourself such a feeling. He has an entire book on that. It's only four short chapters and they're powerful. The book Feeling is the, is the Secret. Feeling of having it produces the results of having it. It's really quite amazing, but it's really scientific. As Neville states here, again, cause and effect, energy and matter, action and reaction are the same and interconvertible, interconvertible. In other words, they are reversible. If one produces two, the two can make, become the one, right? Very, very simple, actually. It sounds complicated and convoluted, but it's not. Expecting it brings the results, just as the results, if experienced, would give you the effect of being elated, of feeling fantastic, of being grateful, <clears throat> of having an attitude and mood of, oh my God, I've got it, it really happened. The trick here is, is to have that mood first, to have that expectancy and that mood and that attitude of being and having it first. The greatest salesmen in the world use this. I was in sales for years and I expected my client to say yes, long before I met them. I knew that they were gonna have a great experience with me and become my client even before I went into all the benefits and why they should buy the product. That's how it works. This is actually scientific, that mood and attitude create your results. I can tell you're starting to understand this. We're gonna take it yet a layer deeper because there's a meditation that you'll see on my channel, which I have several videos on, that the meditation we can do to bring into our subconscious the perceived reality of our wish as already ours. Here's some questions to consider that will help you contemplate um, how deep you're taking this. If you're actually imagining from your beginning, if you're beginning with the end in mind, notice these questions here, starting with number one. Can I believe that I am now the man or woman that I would like to be, though at the moment of my assumption, my reason and my senses deny it? Number two, can I conceive a scene? A scene, if it were, uh, were true, would imply the fulfillment of that scene. I need to go to the end. And we are going to speak more about that. It's one of the 24 methods I'm gonna be giving you in the upcoming videos. How to go into that a meditation and imagine a specific scene. That's why it's so important when you write down your goals, you wanna make them very specific and then actually imagine a specific scene of you being in that home. That's why the question, who might be there with you? What would you be doing? What would your experiences be in that position? We'll talk more about that soon. Number three, what would it be like if it were true? How would it feel? What kind of mood and expectancy would you have? How would it feel if I were now the man or woman that I would like to be? And yet another, number four, let me now imagine and assume that I am seeing reflected on the face of a friend, that which implies he sees in me that which I have assumed that I am. Will it work? That's yet another method that I'm gonna be discussing. How to actually hear it from your friends or loved ones or another person that you already have it using our sense of hearing. We'll talk about that more also. So finally, the idea again is that Neville says we need to catch that mood. You wanna catch that mood first, 
when you begin with the end in mind. Before we continue, I want to thank you for being here and ask you to stay with me. I hope you're getting as much out of this that I, that I get out of it. I really apply this stuff in my life. And I appreciate so much those of you who take just a moment and comment, like, of course you've subscribed, but I'd love to see your comments, your observations on anything we're discussing today. So please do that and stay with me to the end. We just have a few more slides, but it's going to be worth it for you. So the next, we're going to move into a, a related subject. And that is to, when you're beginning with the end in mind, you then want to think from the end, from the end. So let's take a look at that. Ready? Imagine that end as yours already as you begin. Now think from the end. First, we think of the end, of our desire. So first, you think of your goal. You've written down your goals, maybe even gotten specific. You've already thought of what you want to accomplish. That's really just thinking of it. You want to go yet deeper than that and actually dwell there and think from it. And in my next uh, slide, you're going to see a really, really good uh, example of that. This is also a very good one here. You see that little boy? You think that little boy isn't the pilot in that little plane? He's in that plane. He's flying that plane. He is playing the part and he's immersed in it. Absolutely. As it says in life, you're either a passenger or a pilot. It's your choice. So we have the choice and this is what we're going to specifically talk about being the pilot thinking from the end. Let's continue. Then we move into occupy, you occupy it in your imagination. Thinking from the end. Are you understanding yet? Stay with me. The secret of thinking from the end is to enjoy being it. The minute you make it pleasurable and imagine that you are it, you're thinking from the end. And that's taken from a chapter that I've covered both in my reading and explanation of Power of Awareness, Chapter 19, and also in another, another video, which you'll want to watch after this. Thinking from the end, how important that is. Let's take a really interesting look at that. You ready? Okay, so before you jump on me in your comments, yes, I did notice that that picture of that child with the airplane looks like actually a little girl, not a little boy, so I stand corrected. I think it's actually a little girl. In any case, she's using her imagination to the full. So thinking from it, notice this illustration that we see here. We see the top of a person's hands as they drive their dream automobile. Now, are they thinking of it? No, they're thinking from it. They're sitting on the leather. They feel the steering wheel in their hands. They're looking over their hands. So they don't see themselves from afar driving that automobile. They're in it. They're experiencing it. They're living and thinking from it. They're beginning with the end in mind and dwelling there. They're actually already taking ownership. It's theirs. They are there. They're within it. You can feel the, uh, they can look at that beautiful sunset as they're driving in this picture. They can perhaps hear the, the stereo system. They might have their partner sitting next to them or a friend, or they might be driving alone, just plowing down the highway. In any case, they're thinking from the end. And that's what I'm trying to convey to you here. The question here, are you thinking of your wish fulfilled or from your wish fulfilled? What would the feeling be like if you had that wish right now? So not just the expectant mood and expectancy and attitude, but what would it feel like? Place yourself within that desire as already fulfilled and you will be thinking from it. You're already in that great relationship. You already have that great job. You've already shed that extra weight. You've already developed that healthy body. It's already yours. And now you need to occupy it and you'll see it develop. Things will happen. Things will unfold that you can't predict. And you will have that life. 
So yes, indeed, you're the pilot, not the passenger. You're the operant power, which means you're the operator. You're the captain, okay? This is what's meant by being the operant power. You choose and you dwell in it. And you, you, it happens because you, you've made that choice that that is what you're going to be, have, and do. Now, you are in control of what you dare to assume as true. You must operate. You. You must be the one. It is your desire, not your mother's, your father's, your uncle's, your friend and advisor. This is what you've chosen to do because it's what you in your heart of hearts truly want. Okay, it is your desire, your imagination, and your assumption that brings it about. Neville states that clearly from the Power of Awareness, Chapter 4, of the chapter Desire. He says, the ideal you seek and hope to attain will not manifest itself. It won't be realized by you until you've imagined that you already are that ideal. That's the spirit of dwelling in beginning with the end in mind and living in the end. So when should you get started? How about right now? In fact, I'm gonna challenge you with the words of Neville here. We're gonna challenge you, I'm gonna challenge you to be the operant power. Neville gives a personal challenge to each of you, every one of you watching this video, right? He says, and this is from one of his lectures, he says, well, if this night I really believe it. I would not allow the sun to go down on my sleep unless I feel myself right into the situation of the wish fulfilled. Yes, you can start tonight without any further study. Yes, I have more on this, how to use the meditation on my site, and I'll leave you a link for that. But you must do it yourself. This is not something you look for somebody else to do for you. This is your life. You must be the operant power. You must take up the challenge to do this. You are challenged to choose a goal today, which I hope you've already done. Even make it specific. Then, fill yourself right into it, beginning today, tonight, and every night. When you fall asleep, begin with that end in mind and take it into your subconscious as you fall asleep. You'll learn more about that alpha meditation again on my site. You want to practice then, not just watch a video or listen to something online or go to Facebook. No, you need to practice thinking from it and you can start right now. So let's summarize. The beginning with the end in mind. Number one, decide what you want. That's thinking of it. That's step one. Step two, imagine what it would be like when it is actually already true. Use your senses in your imagination and do that as vividly as possible, bringing in everything that you can possibly bring in, sight, sound, even smell, taste, hearing, to make it real to you in your imagination. Feel you already have it now. That's thinking from it. Start from the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To do that, I must begin by feeling that I have already arrived. I've already achieved my goal. And that's taken from Neville's lecture, I am reality called imagination. All of these uh, references you can find talked about on my site and also you can find them online easily. But this is the heart of things, friends. To begin with the end in mind is a first step in living in the end. But coming in the uh, next few weeks, I'm gonna be covering 24 methods. I'm gonna be covering 12 in the next video in this series. I also encourage you to uh, continue to watch my other series, which is the reading of the book, an explanation of the book, The Power of Awareness. But those 12 methods, you're gonna love it because this is extremely practical. I'm a coach who, delves, who uh, lives with solution. I delve into solutions, not pie in the sky, hope, wish, I want, no. 
What can you do in a practical way? I'm going to be giving you specific methods, and the purpose of those methods is to give you a feeling of isness, the belief that it's already ours, using the law of assumption at the center of the way to bring these things about. It'll become clear for you if it isn't already, and I'm excited and I'm looking forward to sharing all of that with you as we go deep and put into practice, systematically cultivate the appreciation that we can have what we want and we can bring our desires into reality through the practice of the law of assumption. Reaching that point of full and natural acceptance is what it's all about. Yes, believe you have received it and you have it already. So I'm looking forward to sharing those techniques, those 24 methods with you in the coming weeks. And I thank you. Please, the best way you can get the best out of this is to apply it. Go back and listen to it again several times if you need to. Pause contemplate the information and begin to apply it in your life and you'll see the truth of the reality of it becoming your life just as I have and my clients from around the world have experienced also. I thank you once again. I look forward to your comments and I'm excited to continue to share this subject of live in the end with you. Thank you so much.